are these people? But, but yeah, I, I'd love to hear if, if Nicole ha has a similar story. I'd love to hear a little bit about uh, um, the, the work that you did that, that led to, where, were you like oh, driving a truck or were you in the warehouse or were you picking? Where uh, What led, and again, I don't want to get into any HIPAA stuff or anything, anything you want to share, but, uh, you know, because it was a result of what what was happening at Amazon and how did the union respond? Did they support you? Did they did they fight corporate for you to get workers comp, et cetera? Can, I'd love to hear more about that story, please. Thank you. Yeah, so I when I started, when I first was at the union, it was that same incident with Brima. And just, it was like, it was like, what's that show? Like, um, uh, Jerry Springer, you know, it was like people yelling. There was a bouncer there. It was like the mm -hmm. most <laughs> insane moment. It was, it was, so I knew getting in there was something wow. really dysfunctional happening there. But I was really curious because as an activist, and I think this is the number one thing that we have to start being more unified with each other. You know, we're, there are so many groups and people doing things, but we're not really like unified. And part of that is because, you know, in my opinion, like looking back in hindsight, where is this funding coming from for this union? Who funded Chris Malls before they got certified? And Myself, I voted no for the union because I have experience with the CSEA and working in the mental health field, and they didn't negotiate any raise for us, and we didn't get any increase. And now, finally, like the mental health system in New York is falling apart. They're trying to give like direct care workers more money because they're everybody who is decent left. You know, that's why I left my other job. I was not getting any representation from that union. So I voted no to the union, and then I was uh, I had a, I had a surgery and I got introduced to when I came back from my surgery I was like let me try this I want to see I saw somebody uh, one of the original organizers and I and I approached him and so that's when I ended up at that meeting where it was just a screaming match and a bouncer and he got kicked out and it was it was amazing so you know what's interesting about my injury is that once the union became certified. Uh, what Amazon did to Union Bus was start hiring people seasonally. And so I was doing pick. And in the pick, we are relying on the stowers to stow things properly. So when something stowed uh, improperly, because that's one of the more more common jobs, either pack or stow, it's, it's more easy to train overall. And the people come in and it's not um, stowed into the the pod correctly so you know you get used to like okay maybe two three weeks before the new trainees catch on so but now it was like every few months new trainees every few months new trainees because people are seasonal so when you're seasonal you either stay on and have to remain seasonal which is which is like when i started amazon people were competing to try to get a promotion which is like absurd nobody gets promotions in amazon you have to know somebody you have to be somebody's friend it's not based on merit whatsoever a promotion at all but the people i when i started you know engaging and informing because that's really a problem in this country and i could say for myself as well is that i was not um aware of what a union really should be and can be and laws that are created like the the taft hartley act that really have clipped the wings of unions just in general so it's just being able to inform people is so important. So when I, that's when I found out that people are competing to just get hired full time. So they're making less money and there's much more um, dissatisfaction. So I, I ended up um, like tearing, uh, um, like a, a getting a tear in my hip. So I can't like do just normal activity anymore. Like I've always been a very active person and and I've got, I called the union. I, well, by the time I got my injury, I'd already left the union. Michelle, it was October. So Michelle was gone. So that was, I couldn't reach out to her. They had locked her out. And like, Karma was there. But, you know, he, like, it's like, how many people can you reach out to? And I did reach out to the lawyers. I called twice because Ron, um, like, Ron and I and Karma and Michelle were really the only organizers in the building. The, the caucus, were busy trying to get signatures so that they could, and they wouldn't disclose. That's what I have to say about the caucus as well. They did not disclose their plan. They they were telling workers, we want new leadership, sign this petition. And they would give like a whole spiel of like why, but the reality was they wanted the petition signed so that they could um, do this federal injunction and, and go to court. 
So, you know, these lawyers, I mean, we've tried to get lawyers for ourselves to represent um, ourselves and like lawyers who is supporting these people like pro bono, like, like I worked full time and I, I know Ron was full time. I don't know. Like, I know some people were on flex, like Michelle was doing the union. So she was on flex time. But, um, you know, I'm working like 40, 50 hours a week doing union things. Uh, I was gauging temperature. I was uh, sending reports to the assembly and New York, uh, the New York assembly with the union to because like the air conditioners would be broken, people working in 90 degree temperatures, mm-hmm. trying and doing like this really high intensity work, like ex- like work, like uh, insane amount of work, especially in PIC. PIC is probably the worst department. And and um, so we're doing all this stuff free uh, like we're not because we believe in the union we believe in you know and i believe in a union i think that yeah if i'm putting in hours i should be compensated but like the whole fact of them never collecting dues in general like anytime i would say oh hey i got somebody and he he's really interested in being part of coming to the meetings oh no there's too much fighting we have to deal with the caucus we have to we can't bring anybody here everybody's fighting we're not happy with chris like even the board members that are there now we're trying to get rid of Chris. And I, I never saw, I, I wanted to form my own opinion about it. And when I saw like, yeah, there's no way this is going to function. I, I agreed. And I felt like we could do it in a more direct form of democracy, like a direct that we have technology. Now we can have the mass membership decide if they want to have a, a new uh, election for leadership. We can, we can, a lot of these things can be put onto a platform that, it could really be very transparent. And that was definitely not popular. So, I mean, I was definitely harassed and by the caucus, just in general, they never, ever, ever would like disclose what they were really doing. And so I kept pushing them and we all kept pushing them. And finally they're like, oh, they finally like threw their hand, you know, that they were going to do this injunction. And it wasn't just collecting signatures to get a new leadership in. It was to go to court with with like very high priced lawyers i don't know who's funding them but um you know it and that's really what opens up this whole realm of what really is a union in this country and what like like we were talking a little bit before the show about the other unions teamsters and like and and how it really is just another a hierarchical type of business you know where it's not really uh people people powered and enabling enabling people so 